Alexei Steele is a visual artist with a background in the Russian Representational School. Born in Kiev, Ukraine in 1967, he began art training at an early age in the studio of his father, Leonid Steele. Alexei attended the prestigious Surakov Art Institute of the Soviet Academy of Arts in Moscow and studied under internationally acclaimed artist Ilya Glanusov. He moved to Los Angeles in 1990 and has been a resident of Culver City since 2013, where he lives with his wife Olga and two sons who currently attend El Marino Language School. He is currently Culver City's artist laureate. Congratulations on being chosen to be Culver City's Artist Laureate. What exactly does that entail? I'm playing my part, participating in the creation of what Artist Laureate program is going to be moving forward. And my strong views of art being full and important participant and lever within, uh, within our society being strongly shared by Culver City, by the city itself, is the exciting part of this program. And, uh, um, and this show is uh, one of the statements of uh, the place of art, the arts are playing in Culver City. How did the video installation Projecting Possibilities all come together? Also, did it stem as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, or was this already in the works? The uniqueness of this show is that it is a direct response of the artistic and creative community to the events that, were, um, that unfolded on us. So the Culver Arts Foundation immediately went in this hyperdrive mode, brainstorming mode, um, to how can we as artists, as local creators, how can we respond being constrained as we are, being shut down as we are, how can we respond? And the amazing initiative by the Helms Bakery, uh, it was envisioned by amazing visionary, um, Angela Anthony of Helms Bakery District. It was amazing answer to this thinking, how can arts be active in this amazingly restrictive in many ways, tragic events uh, and uplift the spirits and be part of us together, jointly coping and overcoming. And uh, that's how this uh, concept for the show, Projected Possibility, came about. But to have an essentially gallery show, which is internal event, inside an uh, interior event of the gallery show, when the multiple images, but to turn that into video installation. So merging gallery concept, museum concept of exhibition with the public art, street facing art. I think I was, I, I grasped when I heard that and immediately wrapped my brain that that's what it is. I'm, I think it's an amazing, I think it's the concept that is working, it can, I cannot believe it, it was not deployed wider, but I'm sure it will be. This is a, one of these visionary initiatives that came as a result of this crisis. This is the creative response. I read that you were the first artist to showcase his work in this 52-week exhibition. What does that mean to you? Do you feel a sense of responsibility in the tone that is set? To me, to see this and to test and to experiment, and to be first for, of all for myself, and then being excited that such a great group of artists will come down the pot. 52 artistic voices, it's a lot. It's an amazing platform. I'm so excited, unspeakably, to see every week this new voice coming up uh, with all its diversity, aesthetic, uh, uh, culture, anything, and how it all comes in this outdoor museum the museum of our shared public space, which to me was a great idea from the get-go, you know. Uh, so this is, of course, a great sense of joyous sense of responsibility to test 
and to test waters, to find the protocols, what works, what works better, and to be part of, again, creative process of setting the format. That's what I feel both um, definitely a sense of responsibility and incredible satisfaction and joy of creativity. Um, do you consider art to be healing during uncertain times? And if yes, why? Yes. Not only do I consider, I am emphatically saying that it is. Art is actually, I would argue, crucial component within an emergence. Art gives the sense of healing internal that gives that sense of hope in uncertain times. And this communicative and healing properties. And I've seen that work in my project, Love My Neighbor and Person, uh, as it became part of community revitalization. This particular process has proved it to me beyond any kind of a doubt. And this show, unique show, is a definitely part of it. Um, how many artists will be chosen and how are they selected? Do they all have a connection to Culver City? Well, the artist, it's a curatorial process, just like any museum or gallery. Uh, it's a curated uh, event. And it, will, it's, it is curated by two great organizations, by the Towns um, Bakery District and by collaboration. Collaboration is crucial in art. Uh, by collaboration of Towns uh, Design, uh, Towns Bakery District and Culver Arts Foundation. So jointly, these two great cultural entities collaborate uh, through their resources and also open source um, available to the public. So people would be able to submit because there is also st stipend, small stipend uh, attached that artists would be able to share as a form of support to art in this super difficult time. Can you tell us about your paintings that you selected for the video installation at the Helms Bakery? And how do they fit in with the theme projecting possibilities? So I selected um, a distinct uh, sort of three groups of images intermix, fully anchoring to the Love My Neighbor project. So they were the key to this installation. Then it was the nature, the voice of nature, which I think is such an important wounded society, wounded nature, but with a, such an incredible healing force. So the healing force of humanity represented through the Sansong hero, this healing force of nature in its pristine power um, uh, uh, represented through my larger scale landscapes, planar works. Um, and then the allegorical works that I do figurative allegor allegorical works representing struggle. And to me, the struggle is internal inside of every human heart. Uh, so those three sets of images intermix is what informed my choice, my own sort of curatorial choice in selecting images for that show because it's a new form. It's a known form. They all blend and talk to each other. One translates into each other and goes into each other. So that was it. It's enormously exciting for me to say. Uh, is it difficult to select art pieces to project for a video installation on glass? And are there pieces that lend themselves to projection format better than others? You know, image projected on the screen, it's all very obvious, it's washed away, it's a whole different thing. It's, uh, you might not end up seeing anything. Uh, so, uh, was I worried? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I never did it before. So I fully cognizant what the you know light thing on the glass will do. So my but my thing was, oh, let's see. But I also had a hunch because it uh, to me it immediately had the promise of this ethereal feeling. So I absolutely the first thing that I heard you know again I'm a nervous. So my whole thing oh I want to try ah. <laughs> Even if it's a complete failure, if it doesn't work at all, I just want to try. I, I, I want to see how it works, uh, even just for myself. So I was just totally just to try and not worried in terms of worry, because what's there to worry about? You know, worry is overrated. Uh, I was just excited to see and fully prepared for the miserable failure. <laughs> 
And but what I absolutely did not expect or anticipate is how my images look scaled up. This is, scale is a huge issue. Not every work looks good big, nor should it look big. I am a size maniac. I love large scale since I was a kid. I was just my thing. Um, though I absolutely saying, you know, big is never bad. It's just, it has to be native size. You know, native size, every work, every expression has its own size. Some has a small intimate size, scale. Some has bigger. Some has, you know, they all have native. How suddenly my images, boom! on that and it worked and not just me i was floored but as i started posting on socials on uh, to, to my friends mail my, my friends response like oh my god it works insane can you share with us why we should all make an effort to pass by the video installation every week to see the artworks from this 52 different voices seen in this completely unique way in this context that we collectively live through all together of us it will be just as exciting for an artist as for the viewer because at that moment the viewer in a way would be just as much as a participant of that new meaning that the images will create as the artist inside so i would say the reason to go there is to experience art and to feel your presence being part of this art. So I'm looking for 52, for 52 chances to be part of co-creation. Your art is so beautiful. Who have been your influences? My biggest influence in a way is mental influence. My biggest influence is what is the cause of art? What is the purpose of art? Why are you doing that? Because once you answer to this, you will pick up your subject matter and then they will dictate how you should be doing this. So to me, this is the way to come up and design and devise purely native expressive means through media and through tools, visual tools that you would employ. So that I guess was my greatest influences was within the view of the purpose of art more than any stylistics. Thank you so much for your time today. It was really interesting to learn more about you and projecting possibilities. Everyone should make sure we all go walk past the Helms Bakery in Washington after it gets dark to view your incredible work. See you all soon. This is such an amazing, great platform. Beautiful, beautiful thought. We need new journalists. Journalistic experience as an idea, as a, as a way of seeing the world. Oh my God, I cannot, I cannot tell. It's one of my absolutely favorite programs uh, around the city.